Oh my gosh. Is the baby, where's the baby? <laughs> oh my God, Cheryl had a baby. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you made a movie and a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Steve. I remember she was pregnant. And, oh, God. keeping that a secret from me. She didn't want me to know. <laughs> what is her name? Or his name? His name is Prince Antoine. He has two first oh. names. <laughs> Uh, oh, guys, hello. He's beautiful. Weedy <laughs> pie. Hi, Minji Kong. None of you have met Minji, who's our editor. I was with oh. her in South Korea. Hey, Minji. You, Minji. You got a little light in there. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you? Great Minji. job. Beautiful work, Minji. Yeah, beautiful. Great job. Amazing. Maya, congratulations, my dear. I, 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 I applaud you so, so much. We, we applaud you. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I applaud all of you for Amazing. playing with me. You know, we did a, wow. we did a miracle. Congratulations. Really, congratulations. It's yeah, beautiful, the press has been beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful work. Thank it's you. incredible that you made a movie at all. I <laughs> That's you know, when I was I was we watch it we watch it yesterday and, yeah. and um and and what I was telling Lou is like you know I mean when you really think about the time you had to do this oh my god oh my god and and, and the little amount <laughs> that you had to do this you know, the fact is that you end up with a movie yeah and this is your first time wow yeah. that's wow. like wow. Wow. It's amazing. That, that in itself is, is a huge it achievement. It really is. It's huge. The good yeah. thing about you with this movie is that people are going to have to see it like 10 times to understand. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you. You be making a lot of money. Yeah, we, we just I, saw I it. Wanna, and I, I want to see it again. See it again. I want to yes. see it again. You, did you read what Coleman wrote? Yeah. <laughs> Coleman, 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 you know, Coleman sent me a, 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 an email. He said, like, I'm not going to comment on it because I'm still processing. <laughs> I said, Coleman, you're not the only one. There's, there's so much symbolism. There's so much symbolism. And it's, it's really a, astonishing. You know, I told Luba, do you know that movie, The Wicker Man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It sort of reminded me. I don't know that one. Yeah, it's an old. It's a, it's from the eight seventies, I think that movie. There were two made, but I'm talking about the first one with Christopher. Yeah, Lee. The better one. Christopher yes. Lee, I think, was in it, and it's a movie that it's um. There were some things that made me make the connection, but it has that kind of feel to it. Yeah, that eerie feel to it. Exactly. It's a connection. It's it's a very strange. It's a it's a very uh, strange unsettling type of situation that that permeates the whole production. You know, so you managed to do that. And the editor was uh, really Excellent. good, very good in what really nice in what she did with, with what she did. Uh, the other thing, Tonya, you can also send the the first the first like five minutes maybe to Virginia to the tourism sector. <laughs> Don't hurt them like but, that. <laughs> in spite of all the racism and stuff, come and see Virginia. But <laughs> I mean, I think I, I dropped in at the at the panelists earlier uh, before we could figure out the cameras. Um, and you know, I think it was Greg who was saying this was like a really good testament to how Black women and, and people of color are dealing with things in Absolutely. the states till now. But it's really, it's really for everyone because you forget that if you get too comfortable, you forget that there's a lot of moving parts that are not for unity, not for like health and wellness and, you know, us progressing and healing wounds, but are like violent and, you know, are not doing what they say they're going to do. I know for me, you know, we're, I feel like I worked really hard to vote for Biden and it's not even uh, two, three days past a hundred days. And I am just like, floored right now about what's happening so you always have to kind of stay on your toes and this movie makes me remember that I have to stay aware of what's happening around me you know 
Yeah, we do. Yes. We do. Yeah. Always. So what were some of your surprising? Did anything surprise you about it? Who are you talking to? Everybody. Yeah, what Everybody. surprised you? I mean, was there anything what that surprised you surprised me was that it was made at all. I mean, it yeah. was like the first surprise. The second thing is that I think that, I mean, I, I've, I worked in a lot, of, I've worked in a lot of movies. <laughs> and, uh, and and I tell you that it's, it's not an easy thing to do. I mean, I've seen big production. I've been in a lot of accidents that, that were like very expensive accidents. You know, and, and, and when I analyze what you've done in the time that you did it and with the message that you incorporated and now the cat that's coming in to say hello. <laughs> She'll do what she does. She'll do what cats do. And... Uh, it, so the fact that you and you you did all these things was astonishing mm -hmm. uh, to me. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I know you're talented, but but that's not enough. You have to you have to put mm -hmm. all the pieces together, and that's not an easy thing to do. So, so it surprised right. me. It surprised me that with such little time and such a small margin margin for error, yeah, this this happened at all. And thanks to everybody who was involved. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't have done it without amazing actors like you guys, because I could say, we're going to shoot 14 pages in right now, and you need to memorize them all, because <laughs> we're going to shoot it straight through. <laughs> That's a lot. And That's true. Hey. Hi. Hey. Good That's to see lot. everybody. Hola, compadre. Hey, Tessa, how are you? I'm good. Good, Steve. How are you? Good, Is good. That no. I'm like, I uh, yeah. I'm like hi, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just been like a technical oh my nightmare. Oh my, <laughs> <laughs> my gosh. Oh, this is great. Hey, Greg, hey, Maya. Hello. I know Maya and Miles. <laughs> Katie and Desolo is here. Oh, this is oh. great to see everybody's face. <laughs> hi, Aquila. Hello. <laughs> Our moderator is still hi, struggling to get in. Our moderator is still struggling to get in. Oh, it was it, 10 days? Is that right, Tanya? Uh, we shot in 10 days with the main cast and there was one day that was thrown and we had one reshoot day. And then one day that was just me that kind of got messed up because our, our camera truck didn't come that day. So it was uh, a drone We had a day. camera truck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. John, John Hudak brought his camera truck. <laughs> that's like big time. That's like that's like that's big time. I would have liked to have seen Where's John? Where's John, Tanya? It was shot so beautifully. So it was it's yes, it such was. A, fabulous. It's it's um, fab. I mean talking? I don't even see. No, when the Kathy, light is on Kathy. Kathy. The whole movie is beautiful and it's extraordinary and sad and so terrifying. And, you were scary. You were scary. Really yes. scary. You were really scary. Yeah. You were. But, but yeah. very like there's such a heavy, it's a very heavy message and it's it's very resonant. You know, I, I felt the message to be very resonant. You know what I it was also very intelligent. I mean, you're yeah. you're waiting for this horror horror movie to happen and you had you had written in so many different symbol symbolic dialogue that that just really made you think and it kind of like stopped you in your tracks about what was going on yeah i love that too jamika cotton um is here in the room and she wants to know how long it took me to write it and it it wrote itself pretty fast it it was you know uh, i mean from the time i thought about it to the time it was written um it was probably about a month from when Kim and I had the conversation in her house. She invited me to her country house. Kim Sykes there. We shot at her house. And she's in it right now. She doesn't like horror movies, and I've now made her country house a place she doesn't enjoy. But, um, it was about a month from when we had the conversation to, to when I had written the script, and then a month later, we were shooting. Yeah, about two months later, we were shooting. Oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and Tanya, I want you to know, um, I'm actually in the city now, but I want you to know that that every now and then I'll move furniture and there's a splatter of blood. <laughs> and, I, and I have to stop and go. <laughs> and then I remember the movie. <laughs> Just say it must it. be me. It must be me because everybody else got burned or, or hung. <laughs> right? <laughs>
Oh, uh, yeah. I just I want to <laughs> pop in because um, I'm supposed to be moderating, but you guys don't need me. I can step back out. You guys are doing a great job of hanging out. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. no well, the moderator. He <laughs> are, so he's an amazing <laughs> filmmaker as well. Um, first of all, I just want to congratulate all of you on the film, and I hear you all congratulating Tanya on getting the film done. It is a <laughs> remarkable feat. There are so many projects that do not get finished. They get started, maybe they get shot, they get halfway through edit, they get they get something, and you never you never see anything. And the fact that we're here talking about a piece of uh, cinematic work that we can uh, we can discuss together is monumentous. It is yeah. huge, and I just I just want to take a second to applaud her and all of you and everyone who contributed to the film because this was clearly a team effort that made it happen, but it would not have happened without the leadership of Tanya Pinkins and the visionary leadership of Tanya Pinkins. So I just want to celebrate, I just want to celebrate that for a second. I've, I've been on the other side a lot of times where I'm going, where? didn't we make a movie? Did, didn't we? <laughs> what, what happened to that thing? Okay. So um, Tanya, I, and I, most people here had a chance to see the movie. And I remember conversations that we had early on about sort of this project and what you wanted to do with it. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk to folks about like what the horror genre means to you. Like, you know, when you say, cause I, I would hear you say, oh, this is not a horror person or maybe this person doesn't understand horror. What, what is horror to you? I mean, horror for me is very relaxing and fun, but it is the <laughs> space where you can talk oh about God. things in a real way that, um, you know, if you put it in a drama, sometimes you can't. I mean, when I wrote this script, people yeah. thought it was far-fetched and extreme. And I think had we come out in March as we planned to, people would have dismissed it as far-fetched and extreme. So that it has come out after all of that has actually happened in reality. Um, I think that, you know, Good point. some of our writers who we think of as like, ooh, they're prophetic. They're just seeing the patterns. And because sometimes I would talk to people about what I had seen and they would treat me like I had two heads or treat me with contempt. I was just like, there's no point in telling people what I see. I'm gonna put it in a movie and I want it to be fun. And I want it to be smart cause I'm smart and I need you know my entertainment to be smart. So yeah, I felt like I needed, to, I needed the movie that I would wanna see. And I feel like um, I think the biggest lesson I learned about this was that whatever your story is, it kind of doesn't matter what people's the notes. Is all on. If you oh, if you have a story you want to tell and 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 you see it clearly, uh, that's what makes it right. And if other people don't get it, that's okay. I mean, if you trust, like there's a kind of knot you feel inside of you when something isn't right, and then only some people are able to help you figure out what's not right about it. Maybe it's the moment before, maybe right. it's the moment after. Sure. But your vision is right. And and don't let yeah, anybody talk do. about <laughs> telling it. Yes, 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 yes. Hail and salute and hallelujah. <laughs> and artists unite. Yes. <laughs> Thinking <laughs> people unite, <laughs> preach. <laughs> So, so who was the first person who sort of, okay, because I'm sure when you were pitching this, uh, well, let me ask you, did you try to go to studio? Did you, how, how far did you pitch? And who was the first person who sort of came on and was like, you know what, Tanya, I think you got something here. Uh, I, that person didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody told me what they say, you need, if you don't have money, you need time. If you don't have time, you need money. And I didn't have either, but I had a vision and I was like, I'm going to keep taking one step forward. And if it, it's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. And it doesn't matter to me one way or the other because of the process. I mean, Millicent was like, she just like, I was like, Millicent, you, you coming back from vacation, get on a train and come up here. I need you. Um, yeah, I mean, when I sent it, I had sent it to Kathy Irby and who I hadn't seen in a long time. And she called me up the next day and said, I was walking down the street in New York and she said, what did you say, Kathy? Do you remember? I think I said, I'm in. She said, <laughs> well, what you actually said is, Tanya, thank you for inviting me to play this awful oh. woman. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> 
man. Yeah, because your your character was really cut through. It was the kind of thing that was that's what was maybe the most horrifying yeah. kind of reveal is when you realize that it there's a potential for someone to be so close to you. Um it's the red it's, pill. It's the red pill, you know, and America has got a few instances of that happening, even with like a, I think there was a either a Hopi tribe or a Native American tribe that had oil rights in the 1950s and a lot of people married into their family to kill them and take take the ownership of their land and i'm just like what is what wow you had children with these people like these oh, my god. oh my god oh my god these things I, have happened oh, in our culture you know it's, it. it's a real thing you and know it's interesting i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead i think the wonderful thing about it is um, one of the many wonderful things about it is like, for those of us who were there while filming, okay. even when watching the movie, we were, ye I was yelling at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> at Me too. Katie's Irby going, ah, <laughs> it's her, can't you tell it's her? <laughs> <laughs> Like, and there's still people who watch it and go, so who is the red pill? And I think, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, it's interesting because you're, because of COVID and everything else, you're not getting the sort of communal experience that I, I keep telling you, like, if you had this in a theater with actual humans, the things yeah. that you would hear would blow your mind. People <laughs> are yelling at the screen. People are very upset. People, <laughs> people are, you know, uh, just sort of mind blown. Um, but you know, it's like it seems. It's, we we keep talking about it as visionary, but this is a classic story, right? This is Into the Woods. This is this is the gingerbread house. You know, like yeah. oh, <laughs> you're gonna be a, a noble human being and go. And, and, then, and then you discover the candy house and then the monster is in there and they eat you to death. Uh, it's mythic. Was, was that your intention? It's <laughs> mythic. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that John Hudak, our DP, one of our camera, op I mean, our DP, our main DP just popped in. I don't think he has his camera on. I think the part that was my intention was, I feel like, you know, as Malcolm X says, the black woman is the most disrespected, disrespected, underprotected <laughs> woman in America. And I really wanted to um, put our point of view out because uh, I don't think people really pay attention to how we see the world and yet we continue to save the world. We continue to save America. We birthed it, we built it and we keep saving it. And so I, I felt like this is an experience I have and I feel like a lot of black women will know what this is and most people aren't even interested. They don't really care. We're just, you know, are we useful to them? And uh, you know, even watching it and, and knowing that people are going to be like restless, like, well, why am I following this person? Because we aren't usually centered in this way. So that was really the, the kind of the most important thing for me. Wow. Um, you shot this before the insurrection, whatever we're going to call this, when we finally <laughs> no, it, determined it, it what, it, what it was. Uh, but after, of course, the election, how did the, 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 the living through the Trump presidency uh, sort of affect your narrative? It, it, or did, did, it, 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 did it incite you? Did it inflame you? No, that was inevitable to me. So, I mean, we wrote, I wrote this in 2009. <coughs> that we didn't change the We finished editing the movie long before any of those things happened. I mean, to me, what happened in America was inevitable. When you give a strong man that kind of power, like, uh, yeah, I didn't change any of the storyline based on the facts. I sort of anticipated that those were the facts that were going to happen. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your talent. Um, as you were casting uh, these wonderfully gifted actors who in no way embody the characters that they portray, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, <laughs> tell us about them that made you believe that they could infuse the realities of uh, this uh, very unique ideology uh, into these into these human beings. Well, I wrote it for Ruben and Luba. Like I heard them, and I wrote it for them. I did not know that that would even be possible, but I was just visioning it when I wrote it. And, and, it, and a coincidence happened where Luba invited me to dinner at her house. 
And I went and had dinner with Luba and Ruben. And Ruben said, one of the first things he said was, you know, in this day and age, you really got to make your own projects. And I had a script in my bag. And I was like, yeah, Ruben. <laughs> 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 Very clever, very clever. <laughs> um, when I was uh, casting Katie, I was like, who is the person that no one would ever, ever, ever believe <laughs> that would, would be the bad person? And and Katie is always so, so innocent in everything. And I was like, she is the one, I don't know if I can get Katie, you know? And fortunately she said, yes. With Adeshala, um, I had another actor who was going to do it, um, Harold Perrineau actually, and his schedule did not match with Rubens. And um, he also, he was a little scared. He was like, you know, I'm married to a white woman, Tanya. Is this like, I hate white people. <laughs> I know we just have to have these conversations. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I had run in, I had met Adesala maybe six or eight months earlier in the lobby of um, the public theater. And I'd seen his work and had been an admirer of his work. And I, I, I'm not, I don't want to speak out of turn, but Adesala is um, a Babalao. And mm -hmm. he began to read me uh, there on the spot. And he said, there's something very big coming for you. And so when I had to choose between Ruben and Harold, and I was like, I'm going with Ruben and Luba because I wrote it for them. I was like, this is the something very big, Adesola. And he is actually, you know, Afro Cuban and he can give me the Brit thing. So um, I called him and fortunately he said yes. I mean, I'm lucky that the people I wanted say yes. Now, Jake, <laughs> Jake <laughs> is my buddy from the playground in Los Angeles. Our kids- He was hysterical. You were very good, Jake. He was hysterical, Jake. Very good. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Jake and I, we go back to our kids being like four and five. His daughter is like a little toe head and my daughter's a chocolate drop. And they made friends in the park. And um, um, Jake is like, so not like Nick. Jake is like, you know, the most straight, the most mannered and polite person in the world. But he is so funny that um, everybody else who read that part was terrified of it. They were just too afraid to play that character because he's the fool. And normally the fool is the black person or the Asian person or the Latin person. So um, the white guys that I asked to do it were like not having it. And I was like, you know, Jake is so good and he's so funny, he could kill this. And so I asked him to come do it. <clears throat> I mean, it's interesting about Jake because you say he's, you know, he plays the fool, like he's the, he's the, the one that we laugh at. But my sister, we, we watched in the film, she, she was like, he's the only one you could trust. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> at least, yeah, at least he was point. honest. Like you knew from the beginning, yeah, uh, he, sa right. he said what he said and he said what he said, but at least you knew, mm -hmm. you know, it's like what they say about people who curse, they're the most trustworthy because they're not holding their words. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, that, all right. That was my idea from the beginning was this guy has no filter, you know? He just, he's talking, you know, crap and the dirty jokes and anything that comes to his mind, he just says it. And at least that way, he was never, he would never stay a clown. At least the truth would come in between the joke. That was my idea. But that was a skill, that was very skillful because you didn't come out like a clown. I didn't, I didn't get that sense when I saw the thing. I, I, I didn't get that feeling. I, 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 and I saw a progression in, 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 in your in what you were at the beginning and when you were in the car and whatnot and what started going on later on I mean you 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 held yourself very well because that's a very tricky role you know it's a very tricky role it could have gone either way if you you just mess once and you're you know it, it and you lose it so it, I congratulate you we're talking commenting about that oh yeah even even like your your death scene or when you get thrown yeah. through the, taken through the window you're still making a joke but you're scared to shit at that point and it was just very it was funny but scary you know it was it was great it's funny because I, I wasn't thinking I never got the sense of a, of a clown never and that's that's uh, because of the way you played it could have happened yeah. But it yeah. didn't happen. Thank yeah, you so was, much. That's that's amazing yeah. coming from you too. Yeah. Send me the money. You got my address. Send me the check, please. <laughs>
Well, I have to say, I'm looking around the the, uh, the the Brady Bunch board here, and I see uh, Minji, who has joined. Are you in Korea? Hi, Kara. I'm in New York at the moment. <laughs> can we get some light on your face, Minji, so we can see you? <laughs> well, we have to talk about the part where it's the middle of COVID, and uh, Tanya calls me just right. to say hi, and I'm like, how are you doing? I think my mom was sick at the time. And she says, I'm going to Korea. And I'm like, you lay what? Lay, lay what? <laughs> Korea? Um, and she's like, I'm going to finish my film and I'm going to Korea to do it. I'm, I'm going to have to quarantine for two weeks. I mean, the things you had to actually do to, to right. actually accomplish the delivery of this film are a bit extraordinary. It's, it's, it the, is crazy. It's crazy. It's no, crazy. It was crazy. Mystery, the mystery meals in quarantine. That's dedication. <laughs> Well, oh, yeah. you know, the Instagram. <laughs> for that Pope store you went to, I, I don't know what that was. Oh, that's a very famous store in Korea. I know, I know. <laughs> Wait, did you say poop store? Yes, poop everything store? is shaped everything? like poop and you eat it in little toilet bowl shaped things. And, you oh, know, it is it, the middle of a pandemic. And this woman is in Korea eating poop shaped food out of the <laughs> toilet bowl. <laughs> <Out of Florida. laughs> I mean, you know, Korea was doing better with COVID than America. So I felt like making a choice to go to Korea was a far safer choice than staying in New York. And I was nine months into, oh God, I got you all up on the big TV. I was nine months into um, editing and I didn't have a film. And I, I really just thought I had failed. Um, you know, I thought I that there was like, a, I, I'm very much instinctively you know, guided and like everybody said, I didn't have the money or the time. And I was just like, if it's supposed to happen, it's supposed to happen. And then nine months after finishing shooting, we didn't, I didn't even have a rough cut. And so I just, you know, had to go like, I failed. I tried, I failed. And maybe because I'm a Gemini, there's a part of me that's like, okay, I failed, but is there any hope? And then I got on this idea of like, I'm gonna, I've been working with ma male editors and they don't take my notes and they don't do what I asked them to do. I'm only going to do with a female and I'm only going to do a female of color and a color for me went non-American. So I, I had a Berliner and I had an African-American woman and Minji came to me as a recommendation from another filmmaker friend of mine. Minji can edit, but Minji is a, an extraordinary filmmaker. And, yes, she is. Um, when I uh, looked at her movies online and you should look at them, The Loyalist, I just watched all seven of her films and I just became a fan. So I didn't ever even dream that Minji was a possibility. And when Minji said she would, um, you know, even have a meeting with me, that was huge. So Minji, why don't you tell us your side of it? Because I was just like, oh my God, if we can have Minji, I don't care what anybody else says. What about your side of the story, wow. Minji? Wow. Um, the way the project was, came to me, I mean, when it came to me, I was very special. So I thought, oh, maybe it is something that I should do it because universe was sort of calling. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, I got, um, mm -hmm. I was introduced to Tonya um, through a producer whom I have met um, in Berlin. It was like 2017 Berlin LA because one of the short film that I edited won honor of mention um, at the International Berlin Film Festival. And then I haven't really kept in touch with the producer for years. And then one day out of the blue, I was actually in quarantine in Korea because I split my time between US and Korea. And I just came back to Korea from LA. And then I was in quarantine. And then suddenly I got an email about this film. And I said, okay, um, I will take a look and I, re I will read the script. And then I thought it was a very special film. Um, had a lot of symbolism, had a lot of messages. And when I first spoke to Tonya, um, I, I wanted to work on the film. Yeah, and we, and we are so glad that you did. <laughs> uh. You know, one of the things that was challenging is I wanted all this art and I, I, there was all this um, use of painting and all this symbolism and stuff. And so many of the editors I had worked with, they would just stick the painting in and it, it wasn't working. And I, you know, I'm gonna brag on Minji. Minji is a painter. She has a degree from the Art Institute. She also has a degree from 
I, I, sorry, Tonya, I didn't major in painting at SAIC. I majored in film and art, but I did a lot of painting back in the high school in my senior year. I think. Uh, <laughs> She's a painter. She went mm -hmm. to the Art Institute. She went to the George, the, the Savannah School of Design, and she also went to Columbia for directing. And she's a brilliant filmmaker. And looking at her work and what she did with art and images, I was like, this is what I'm trying to do. She she does it in her own films. She will understand what I'm doing with the fact that the paintings, which were all made by Kim Sykes. Um, who is an amazing artist amongst other things, actress, you know, director of Girl Be Heard. I wrote this script around Kim's paintings and then I commissioned Kim to do the painting of the donkey and the lion skin. And so I needed an editor who understood how to work with art as storytelling. And one of my favorite things about Minji, I'd start telling her, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. And as y'all know, I, I'm a heady, so I have a lot of ideas and Minji no. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> Minji Impossible. Me, Not true at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go back. Yeah. Minji would say to me, that sounds good in a sentence. I love it. That's, that's, that's a that's a note for your ass right there. Yeah, I, I will use it in the future. Um, I see our illustrious DP John Hudak is in the house. Um, talk, hey. talk to us about cinematography and framing and um, drone shots and all kinds of things that you did of miraculousness. Wait, what was that last part? Recklessness. <laughs> Yes, miraculousness. Mir mir yeah. Chasing, <laughs> chasing skies and chasing light coming up and chasing darks going away. Yeah. It was fun. Yes. Um, I don't know. It was all Tanya. Not all. But she was. I. We'd spent what like three days talking beforehand, and then like we just tossed movies back and forth, tossed paintings back and forth. The day that we drove up, I almost wrecked the cube truck. Do you remember that, Tanya? Yeah. yeah. And we, we lost the day of shooting because that truck, you know, fell apart. Yeah. Well, yeah. clearly you great. should have had Ruben drive the truck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a funny story. I was so just going to say that. A week before we start shooting, Luba says to me, Tanya, has Ruben talked to you? I'm like, no, I, I, she said, I keep telling him he needs to tell you he doesn't drive. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really do not know how to drive a car. Well, you were, you were fooling everybody in the movie. Well, hey, the, fear, the, the fear of I that mean, scene was real. Yeah, that was real. Because <laughs> initially, initially, I think I was scheduled as a possibility, right, Tony, that I was going to drive and that didn't work out for whatever reason. And Ruben was behind the wheel, and we all were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was a good thing that we were like in these, like, uh, sort of, uh, we were like in uh, witness protection program areas. <laughs> so, so there weren't that many cars or, or human beings, you know, maybe UFOs or werewolves, but not people. <laughs> so you, you could actually like drive, you know, with your arm out and have a conversation at the same time, you know. It was it was like but empty. Thank God for that. Because yeah. Otherwise, I would have not. You you didn't even have insurance. You know, you, it's like you know, I would have not driven that car for no for nothing. No way. There are two questions here for Kathy Curtin. Um, someone wants to know Kathy Curtin how you prepared for your role, and they want to know about the scene sitting on the couch. Ooh. Oh. Well, I I um I don't I didn't. Like, I feel like, Tanya, you have that special thing um, that you just sort of enter into your world and you don't prepare, you know, you know, like I, I really think that I didn't really come to this film knowing that I was going to do this dystopian character. I just sort of followed your script and I just felt like you're, you, you're writing, I, maybe it's because you've been an actor for so long a brilliant, brilliant actor that, you know, your writing allows you to go in, you know, you just follow the script and you go in and you just go in as, 
you just morph into something, you know, it's like, it's like a, your writing is very magical and it creates a magical environment in which to work is simply to show up, you know, to allow yourself to be there. And I don't know, like that was, you were very, your, your vision is very clear. And so um, I just showed up. That's what I did. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> All of you more than showed up. I mean, we, you know, there was no, talking, whispering to the actors and da, 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 da. I hired people who are all magnificent at what they do and who I knew that one word, they could take it and run with it. And so the extent of my directing was, I'm gonna say action, you're gonna take a 10 count before you start. And when you get to there, a, a take 20 there, cause you know, I know I want your reactions in there. And that was about the extent of my direction. And I would turn on the camera and let them go because I have a great love and respect for actors and what we do. And all of these actors were fantastic. If I told them I need you to take time here and take time there, I knew they would fill that time. And so, you know, Kathy, I just turned the court camera on her and she would just go. She would just go. And I we would think you, I think you're giving your you're cutting yourself a little short though. Like even as a DP, like I read the script and I like we exchanged what we wanted it to look like and pictures and references and everything else. But like, I knew what I was doing. Like I knew what you wanted by reading the script. Your script was like, and I think everybody could say this. It was a roadmap that we just needed to follow. Yeah. That's what you I'm trying so, to say. You were so yeah. perfect. The script was written so well that it was, you made our jobs easy. Well, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I yeah. wish I believed that. Thank you for saying yeah. such things. Um, someone asked about the moment on the couch and, oh. um, I, that was really uh, you T like I, that was really you. I, I mean, I think I also, I, I, I think also you, you, you have this sort of like the vibrancy directorially to just be like, to this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Kathy, you I know? want you to be a cobra and I want you to swallow <laughs> an animal whole and yeah, really and that, enjoy it. And I want to see it going all the way down your body as you're, as you're eating it. <laughs> exactly. Now, while you're sitting on this couch and that, that was just how it happened. You know? So it wasn't really, um, you know, it wasn't a, uh, but I, I, I really love working that sort of creatively where it, it's very collaborative with this sort of like, you you really do have a spiritual map in your work and and a, a map through which you 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 can just simply go and and uh so i i don't know i i thought that was really um you know and then also i think being in an environment that everybody was just going you know you, it's the blessing to be working it doesn't matter if you have 10 days or 10,000 days if you're in an environment where nobody is really going, it doesn't matter. But if you're in an environment where everybody is going and you have 10 days, it's like, it's like you have a million days, you know? And I think that that was also so amazing too. It was a beautiful family. You know, it was amazing to witness you, Kathy, developing that character on set and photographing it, all of you. But uh, I, it was just, I, you, you bore to the heart of it. You walked on set and developed this character and it became that. And I, I it was just witness to it. It was an extraordinary experience. It was brilliant. All and I think that that's, that's a testament to the unifying factor of all of this, you know, like I think filmmaking is an algebraic equation and it, and, and, and your world there too, Greg, everybody, everybody there every day was about this thing that we were doing and it was a gift it was a gift yes and and so i feel like that is something that is very special you know it well, is it is i have a, the bug has bitten me i'll be calling you again because i i'm like I'm, I'm addicted now this is my new drug <laughs> <laughs> uh, i have Most a question from the audience here. it says uh one of the scenes I found to be the most powerful and provocative is the white women subjects lamenting and mourning the lynching of uh, Jake's character, a white man. Did you experience any shift in your psychology or emotions relative to what 
Black women must have felt seeing their beloved Black men and sons lynched. Could you describe your feelings and thought process as you enacted that scene? Uh, Is it directed to this question? The ladies who were in that scene. Oh. The, the white ladies in that scene? Oh. Luba, you and I. Oh, so it was <laughs> Um, that's well, a great we didn't question. See, we, we actually didn't see him. That was, you know, we had to just kind of act on the moment. Tanya just let us, she was telling us that, the, you know, he's going to be hanging from this tree. He's on fire and go. <laughs> so um, what was the question, Kira? <laughs> it's, I guess the question is about did, did performing in this film feel sort of viscerally affect you as an actor? Yeah, was it, I think even watching it, like we just went from one horror moment to another. You know, I was thinking about going down the stairs into the basement. Um, and then, you know, it, I felt like a ping pong ball. We felt like, you know, we were just catapulting between one horrible thing. Um, to another and uh, it, you know, it's it, it, just to just sit there screaming together, whole, clutching each other, um, trying to put that image of him burning in our, in our heads. It was, it was not easy. It was not easy. Um, yeah. yeah you Screaming and all of your work was really so, I thought it was so chilling. And, and Catherine, I, I really, I, I really would not have known that you were the pill. I, I, I really, I was sort of like, and it made me ill, it made me want to vomit, you know, like, and, and so I just, I just feel like this is an incredibly successful um, film for where it has taken us, you know, and, and I hope a lot of people get to see it. I really do. I hope, I hope it gets out to a wide audience. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's uh, prophetic and profound and we need to be a part of um, this movement forward. And if horror is a genre that enables us to sort of have these conversations, um, that's brave of Tanya. And uh, I just thought, I think it's very successful film. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I think whenever you're holding a loaded gun, you know, you, you're always the person who is the killer. But this movie did more than just pick the killer. You know, it did more than just sort of say, like, the philosophic aspects, the social aspects, the horrible aspects of, of what's going on and has gone on in our society, that, that, that really came to bear here without, in a new way of understanding it. You know, thing, it's, it, yeah. it's, it shows the power of art. One thing yeah. I wanted to tell you before I forget, you know, I, it was really good that you didn't you didn't load the dice, you know, you didn't put people like with a MAGA hat on. Yes. You know, yeah. That would have been like the cheap thing, like the easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's like, because it's not that, it's not that easy to identify people today. You know, yes. so. It, it, right, it, it, right. I mean, the guy, oh, the guy with the hat, no, but the guy without the hat is also, you know, it's right. as, serious as the one with the hat. So it was, it was a good thing that that wasn't cabled and, and it was not a cheap, you know, punch, uh, you know, you, you like kept it smart in the sense, you know, this is what's happening and it's happening all over. It's not just people, some people, the people that you think are the ones that are going to hurt you or are going to act a certain way. It's just, it's all over the place. So the work is even more difficult, you know, because you have yeah. to, you have to identify yourself. You have to identify the danger. You yeah. have to be ready. And, to you, know, be and you don't know where it is. Yeah because you can't tell anymore. You know, so it's, it's, that was another thing I, I picked up from that, from that experience. And that was important to Absolutely me right. in the sense that I feel like 
Hollywood storytelling has primed us to be prey for psychopaths. Mm -hmm. the whole idea of save the cat. And if a person does this, then they're a good person. Well, now all the bad people right. think that all they have yep. to do is do these things and then people exactly. will think they're good people. And so right. I really wanted to play with that. I also want to say Jason Munn came in who did, you know, all of that beautiful Halloween direction and the scare. Hey, Jason. Hey, Jason. Hey, Jason. <laughs> You know, he's a nice, nice white guy living in Vermont, one of the whitest states in America. Tell him about me asking you to make a black Sambo scarecrow. Jason. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. Uh, I was petrified, actually. Uh, like, I actually have permission to do blackface. I'm like, Northern boys from Vermont are allowed to do this. So um, yeah. it, it was actually challenging for me uh, I, I, I asked the question, like, what am I doing? And is this okay? And, um, and I, 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 because you said I should do it, I did it, and I guess it was okay. Well, you know, it's interesting that everybody seems comfortable about having these conversations in the genre of horror. T Tanya, can you talk about your choice for that and how other films like Get Out, you know, these sorts of things are sort of um, advancing the conversation, the, the sort of social conversation that we're having? I think because people don't take horror seriously. You know, they don't think it has weight and I love horror. And so I was like, well, can I put weight in horror? And so I don't know, you all can tell me, was I able, was the horror able to hold all the weight of all the issues I put in it? Absolutely. Yeah, that does. Oh, it yeah. it and I have to give you, I have to compliment you on, you know, like playing within the genre. Like you had uh, an appropriate amount of jump scares, uh, <laughs> the, the black man died, uh, you know, <laughs> all the things that are supposed to happen, happened. And we still had this, you know, uh, politically charged educational experience about a conversation about, you know, race and identity in America. Uh, so. Can I add something to that? Um, when I saw, um, the, in terms of horror, I don't, I haven't been someone who's watched horror, who liked horror. And um, Tanya went to tell you, I watched a horror film yesterday that I love. <laughs> I'm telling you about it. But I was watching one of the earlier cuts and um, really began to get appreciation just of horror and, and, and the way it's used. And even for me as a Black woman, there was another layer of horror on top of the, you know, what comes with the genre. So even just in the beginning where, when the car pulls over to, um, to but when the car, car pulls over and everyone gets out of the car except for cast to get the sign. I was like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> that in my body, you know, that reaction was another, another layer of horror for me watching this film. Mm. Wow. So, so at the same time, it gave me the space to feel that fear kind of a container of where yeah. horror is expressed um, that I'm finding some appreciation still kind of working through. But yeah, that was another layer for me. And that happened, of course, throughout the film. Mm -hmm. Can, well, I, can I, I say to something say, too, you know, what's well, interesting? Say, you oh. have to ask Jake about how the film crew felt about that sign. It, everyone was mortified as these people were driving by. You remember yeah, the woman? So you remember the woman that came yeah. out of the car, and we had like the, the violent argument in the street. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. That? Yep. yep. And Who's, wow. Whose side was she on? Whose side of that side was she on? Wow. No, she was pissed. She was against the side. Right. Right. Yeah. She was pissed. She well, was. And can I tell she you? She was on our side, but she but just she was felt, like, you know. Yeah. Can, can I say this too? Two things on that. One, first of all, I, I hate horror movies, but and I hate them because, and, and as a black woman, I watch them and I think, wow, because usually horror movies are around the death of a white woman. They're always like poor white women are being killed and murdered and mangled on horror movies all the time. And I always look at that and go, wow, if they're doing that to white women, when are they going to do to us? You know? <laughs> and so Tanya's movie for me was like, that's what they'll do to us, you know? So it's, it was scary in that sense. But also in the hood, you know, in my hood, North Chatham is considered a very, very um, progressive yeah. Chatham. You know, there's five Chathams, right? So North Chatham is supposed to be like really cool. I mean, yeah. and so, but, but all that being said, 
um, you know, the conversation around there are people around you don't know who's who and all this other stuff that totally exists everywhere. Um, but people would say to me, I remember one of my neighbors said, was that a, a person hanging from the tree? You know, <laughs> oh my God, how could that happen? And how could that be happening? You know, there was that I've heard uh, about the sign. I heard about people just being horrified about these things. And it's interesting um, because these things happen not just in movies, they're happening in real life. Um, and so it's, it's, it's interesting to see the reactions because that's the way we should feel. But I feel like we should feel that as well when we see, you know, uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and all these other things that are actually real. Yes. Yeah. So it's, and, 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 but, say, and you're not telling them that those signs like that were up in your neighborhood right after the movie. Well, that's why I think horror is the perfect genre for your message because it's holding hands with reality or true crime or, you know, it's a fine line, unfortunately. And, and, and by the way, Tanya's right. After the movie was done, during the hottest part of the election, we had signs appear all over North Chatham. Oh, wow. Uh, and the signs, uh, I'll try to find a photo of it. The signs were like single spaced. Um, they were like 24 by 30. Uh, and they were like, you know, you people should die, you progressives, and you know, you don't belong here. I mean, really visceral, you know, very scary signs. And they were, they were appearing in different roads and stuff. So it was like art, art uh, imitating life. And, and also, if, if I may, one of the things in, in regards to um, the scarecrow and and um, the scene with the stocks, with Bobby getting the brand, I really appreciated the fact that Tanya went to those realities that people oftentimes want to act or or make seem, seem as if they didn't happen. You know, I remember that scene with the branding and there's no way that I was looking forward to it. I wasn't scared of anything in the, in the script, but I knew or I had an idea what that emotionally would do to me, just visualizing myself in there. And I think we did it. And Tony was really good, like, okay, so we won't keep you long. It was also freezing. And, and I remember thinking, if this is what it was, right? And I have, I have the luxury of doing this and walking away and going and relaxing and getting on the cell phone, then, then imagine the fear of getting up in the day and not knowing if for reckless eyeballing or for not moving fast enough, if this could happen to you. And you don't, you don't see that in, in content today. You see it in real life, like to your point, Kim, with the, the murders and the things that we've seen in the last year and in the last 50 or 100 years, but to put it on film so uh, blatantly and vividly was really courageous and and I felt it empowered me and I grew even though I did not like the feeling and I did not like the, the actual process and I think it was Katie I was like are you okay because I don't know how I looked when I came uh, mm. from finishing but everyone in the cast was like yo are you are you good and I was like not really but I want the people to feel the same way I felt when they view it yeah. even if it's one yeah. second, or I didn't know we how long it. we're going to be there, you know, so. Um, and yeah. I can, if I can, if I can add right to there. that, it's so funny, Tanya, I don't know if I told you this, but the day that we were lynching Jake, cute little dog who was a question, the cute little lady died because we used her house as one of the rooms. She had seen me walking back to the production house and she runs over and say, Melison, is that guy okay? They got a neck, they got a rope around his neck. Is he okay? I was like, he's fine, it's just acting. <laughs> Yeah, and that's where it was like. Him. She got so concerned. She's like, "This really is going to be a really good film." And I said, "You have no idea." Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the hard part though, because it's it's the it's the branding. It's like the outright the the horror makes it so that you can think about these things and you're prepared to be on. Mm. I remember in that big finale scene um, when uh, you know Tanya's got burlap on and a rope around her neck and everything.
in that final scene where Tanya has a rope around her neck and wearing a burlap sack and everything, I remember after the incredible performance she gave, just going over to her and giving her a hug and saying, are you okay? Because that's, that's yeah. it's really scary. It's really, it's really scary for real. Yeah, but you know, it's interesting, um, Daniel, I'll get right to you. It's interesting what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I experienced is it, the, the scariest part of the movie is the horror of human beings and how horrible the fact that we can be so horrible to one another based on anything, I don't, like race, what, like whatever your issue is, the idea that one human being would treat someone that way beyond the jump scares, beyond the fire, beyond everything, you know, the bow and arrow, which is the, one of the scariest things to me in the world, at archers, like that would scare shit out of me. Um, but the, 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 the fact that I, I'm talking to somebody in the grocery store and in their mind, they have these horrible thoughts about what, what they could do to me. Like that's the real, that's the real horror. Um, Danielle, you had your hand up? Yes. Hi. Um, I just, I just wanted to say, I have not watched the movie yet, but I did the script supervising. So my, my experience so far has been with the script. And I just wanted to add that it was a very emotionally charged story. And one of the things that kept popping up in my mind is something that made me feel really uncomfortable is this idea of fake sisterhood mm. guarding white and black women. It's like we try to be there for each other in womanhood because we're women, right? But it is clear that there is a huge gap in perception and priorities and history between white and black women. That honestly made me feel very uncomfortable because mm. I take a lot of things for granted because I am white, obviously. And the way you wrote this, Tanya, honestly, I was just like, it was an honor for me to be part of you, your crew. It really was. And I think all of the white women who participated in this movie were amazing, given the subject matter. And I wanted to, before I forgot, like I had to say this, Adesola, I think one of the most disturbing things that I saw, other than that scene we were just talking about, was when you had to strip to do the lake on a really, mm. really frozen cold morning. Like I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I do not yeah. know how you did that. My hats tip off to you all the time for that. And just these specific scenes that that show this terrible violence that we're, we we take for granted. And I say we as in like, you know, I, I don't even know how to talk about it. It's, it is a little bit uncomfortable for me because I do take these things for granted, I have. And I just, it was horrible. It really was, it's, it's horrible. And uh, continuing, uh, I forgot, uh, who was it who said that they didn't like horror movies because they always kill a white woman. <laughs> I thought that was very spot on. And honestly, I do not watch horror movies precisely because of that. It's like, oh, it's just another woman getting killed or an another stupid guy getting killed. It's like, it's no fun. But this is another level of horror. This has so many layers, like some of you have mentioned. And mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> I feel terrible that I haven't. I'm probably the only one who hasn't. Um, but after this is over, I would love to know where I can see it. <laughs> I've just been- You know, it, it's interesting. The, the comment about the horror films killing white women, uh, you know, it's, it's the news for us. You know, like the way you guys are reacting to the ideology, like, I don't want to watch horror films because they're just going to kill white women. I don't want to watch the news because they're just going to kill black people and kill yeah. black men. I'm going to see it every day. And it's real. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have I have another question from the audience, but I need a prop. I, I need a prop to ask this question. Let me see if I can grab it fast enough. What's oh, boy, prop? boy. Prop. I got, I got, I got to, you know, I got to do you right, Tanya. Props are involved. This could be really scary. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> All right, drum roll. <laughs> okay. The morning after we watched the film, I came to my mother like this. 
She was in her bed, and I came and I said, Mother. <laughs> <laughs> she did not think that was funny at all. So we would like to talk about the, the, the symbolism of urine in the film. Uh, and um, let's see, uh, yes. It's one of the most, they said that it's one of the most haunting elements of the film. And I was repeatedly disgusted by it. I was repeatedly disgusted. And that's probably the most historical aspect of the film is the use of urine in tweed wear. Oh the yeah, that, that was just- The preservative in sourdough bread. Urine was how people paid rent. Like you know, that, that find, people find that. I have a whole book here of just called The Life of Pee and all the things, pee, urine was what we used to make bullets and gunpowder. Like there's just, you know, all this just history. I didn't make up anything in the movie. It's all based on real things. The urine ritual is a real ritual. Like, yeah. With the yeah. champagne, okay. with the champagne cascading thing, <laughs> champagne. you invented that. You invented that. <laughs> or Jason. I, I don't know. I don't know. People do things. <laughs> oh people people do weird no. things. No. Y'all oh, know I've been to some of them eyes wide shut parties. It's not always cold. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. not always just cold. You know what I'm saying? Like it be stuff. People, adults. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, speaking of the the symbol, talk about let's talk about the symbol that the red pill women wore and how you how you, how you came to the ideology of manipulating that you know Sanskrit Im imagery. Okay, before I say that, I want to just make sure there's a bunch of people who have their hands held up, and I don't know how to do that. So I hope either Katie or Kiara, you know how to let those people answer the question because I don't. Now I'll answer the question about the the symbol. Uh, Kim Sykes and I were sitting at her dinner table in the country and it was the weekend after the two shoot mass shootings in a row and Kim was kind of like oh you know these are random crazy people and out of my mouth came that's what you think because you don't see them having a leader who has a thousand a vision for a thousand year reign and I started thinking about that like what if all these mass shooters are actually acting on a mission. Mm. And over the next few weeks, I started researching the forked cross, which was one of the most, you know, venerable signs in Hinduism and Buddhism. And then one day, boom, that image popped into my head. And, and, I, and I can only say it was like the muse told me that. And I looked at it and I flipped it to the right and I was like, whoa, I make this movie. Okay, okay. And it's the way that there's this cultural appropriation, you know, that the okay sign has now become a white supremacy sign. There's so, and so, you know, that idea at the beginning of the film that people become loyal to lies. I was like, okay, well, you can make the own sign into the white supremacy sign. And it's as much a lie as this is a white supremacy sign. And I was, I'm just fascinated by people getting very loyal and willing to risk their lives for these inventions that, that are just kind of ridiculous. That, can, I, I mean, oh, can, I, can I tell you one thing that I, I feel like that your use of symbolism in this film was very Brechtian in the sense that it was it was a film within a film, yeah. you know, and you did that when you showed footage of the house while we that they were watching while they were laughing while we were waiting for Luba what yeah. Luba's character you know it was the 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 concept of putting the film within the film. Is, is also how you upended and gave a point of view about symbols and about, about how all of these symbols are meaningless in the context of human action. They're, they're, just, they're just symbols. They don't, they don't have actual knowledge. Human action is where the knowledge is and hiding behind the symbols, you know, when the, when the Hitler, um, the uh, footage, you know, everything was really, you really were, are pulling the, the together so much that is iconographic. And it's incredibly sort of like super smart, you know, super, yeah. super intellectual, super symbolic. And so it's not really horror. It's like an intellectual horror. 
you know mm, yeah and that 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 is just it just Conceptual. That, it, it well, stays with you more you know i have to give that to minji kang because i had a lot of ideas and as you can see i can be very heady and Minji would take them and make them be cinematic. And there are things that are they're happening that she started teaching me about um, nonlinear storytelling. And so like some people who get very linear in how they think need, things need to be would be like, wait, you move these things and they're linear. And it was like, once I surrendered to Minji teaching me about nonlinear storytelling, I was like, okay, just yeah. tell the story, you know, the juxtaposition of images, which is what Eisenstein talked about. And, and that is really a credit to Minji's, um, you know, understanding of image and symbol and the space inside the screen as a different space than the 3D world that we live in. Yep. Tanya, when you think about this film sort of in the lexicon of things that are, especially like what's coming out right now, like what are we watching? Um, Judas and the Black Messiah, um, Lovecraft Country, um, you know, like all of these films that are sort of, re-envisioning the Black experience from the Black perspective, right? Um, how, what do you hope that it, it, its effect is going to be on sort of the cinema landscape? Um, I mean, I guess for me, I feel like, you know, I've kind of gone out on a, a real limb in letting you see the inside of my mind. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very vulnerable. It's, you know, it's not for everybody. It's going to offend people. I think my greatest hope is that someone goes, she got away with that? <laughs> this thing that I'm getting ready to do ain't nothing. <laughs> go sign. You have given us all the go sign. <laughs> yeah, because I heard somebody just, somebody was just having a conversation. Um, and, and they were asking the director, do you feel responsible Maybe it was for, with Shaka. Do you feel like you have a responsibility to do, you know, to tell the history of people and to be accurate about it and, you know, and all that sort of thing? Um, and he very beautifully said, like, it, if it's a story I want to tell, it's a story I want to tell. I love, love, love that you just told your story the way you wanted to tell it and put it, you know, just put it out there. Mm -hmm. um, and it is going to free some other person to be like, well, yeah, I got, I got some, I got some shit to say too. <laughs> Um, I'm sure you were nervous about sort of letting this cat out of the bag. How do you, how do you, how are you feeling sort of like first few days? And I know it's still very new, this whole, this whole other people looking in your uh, underwear drawer situation. <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling? Um, well, you know, right before watching it with you guys today, I watched it with um, the cast of Women of the Movement down here in Mississippi. And that was, you know, my first time seeing it on a screen, seeing it with people. Um, it was a, an audience of white people, black people. So, um, you know, as expected, I was really clear, you know, I could see when, you know, some of the white guys' legs were shaking, like uh, nothing's happening. This is, and it was like, oh, you know, that's how we feel when you all film a paper bag flying in the wind and we're supposed to think that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but this is us actually telling you how we feel and what we're going through. And, but, you know, a paper bag in the wind is beautiful and we should call that high art. So um, it, it was, it was, it was nice to, it was what I thought. Like, I know that, you know, for many white people, this is like, what, 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 why I got to listen to this? this isn't, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not interested. What is this going to do for me? And um, there's a joy in making them have to sit through it. I mean, they don't have to, they don't have to pay for it, but I, I guess, um, you know, that's the gift you have when you're a storyteller, you've got this audience and, and you, you have them, uh, you know, you've got this reign and you get to lead them where, where you want to take them. And so I, I think that because there's so many layers, like there's so many things we haven't even talked about that are in the story that I know that this film will continue to work on people long after the seeing of the film. I mean, for many of the black people who were watching it, they were just like, they were just like, yeah, you know, they were stunned. They were like, did, did she really tell them truths? <laughs> oh, whoa, like, you know, we get lynched for, for telling lesser truths than that. She actually told stuff that we say to each other and, and 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 think about and and I feel like that's a really important thing because so much of America is this denial of truth and fact 
And the more people tell their version of reality, um, the closer we're gonna get to uh, e equality. The more individual specific stories we all hear, the better it's gonna be for all of us. Yeah, I, I have to say when you first gave me the script um, and I read it, it was, it, my was very, it was very disturbing. It was raw. It was, I couldn't believe you had written half the shit that you wrote. Um, and some of it I didn't understand, and it, but I was, um, I was hungry to really get a grip on it. And so I wanted, so I read it again and it, it started to really affect me. Um, and I wanted to do it. I felt it was so different. It was not just a horror film, but as I said, it's, it's a political horror film, a very intellectual horror film, political horror film. When I was shooting it, I, I, I was really just doing my job. It didn't affect me as much when I was shooting it, but when I watched it last night with Ruben, the horror of it, and the reality of what was going on in the movie was very shocking to me and it was very disturbing. And I think that's great. Um, yeah. It was, yeah, it really, it, it just hit me to, um, it, it, it hit my core. And, that's what um, I took out of it, yeah. Yeah, there's I, really it, yeah, think there's something, I, I was like, well, I don't know, it was just, uh, you made, you did your job. Tanya is what I'm saying. You know, it, mo it really moved me. If you could be moved by yourself, you did your job. Well, <laughs> it was just the whole picture of it all. I mean, and there was so, so much symbolism as everybody's been saying, and Ruben and I even talked about it. There was so much that I missed that, that when I watched it, I went, oh, 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 okay. You know, and it just uh, started to come together and it was very, very strong. Your message was very strong. I think all of you uh, deserve a severe round of applause. I mean, it's 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 tremendous work. It really is. People, you know, like to say, "Oh, this movie, this and this movie, that." But until you've done it, your damn self, you just do not know how hard it is to actually finish a film and get it into a presentable format. Mm -hmm. I've seen people finish films and they never distribute. They don't never nobody ever sees it anyway. You gotta go to their mama house to see the movie. Like <laughs> and I might add too to be in it and direct it. I mean, goddamn, Tanya. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> produced it, acted, and mm -hmm. directed. Yeah, she's an unstoppable Korea. force. You know, I, I never thought for a second that th this film was not gonna be not made. She's an unstoppable woman. Yeah. This is true. And you were going on like two or three hours of sleep a night. I yeah. remember. No. You were right. sleeping. Yeah, she she was me in the up. notes at three o'clock in the morning. We yeah. haven't heard from Robin. Robin lives in North Chatham, where we shot with with Kim, and this was Robin's first film. Robin, hi. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I had a I guess a unique perspective as someone that's uh, never been around any uh, any film crew, any actors, anything like that. And it was just this uh, amazing invasion of the town. And uh, I was so lucky to meet, you know, several of you amazing actors. And just, I just witnessed um, uh, three, three partial days of shooting, but it was intriguing and amazing and so much fun, really. And Robin, I really loved meeting you. She, was the, she killed Ruben. I did. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ruben. I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, especially the eye. I didn't know yeah. the eye. I got more. I got more more arrows in me than say Vincent. <laughs> I mean, you didn't shoot another arrow because I probably the budget, you know, didn't allow you to. Right. But, yeah, <laughs> but I do apologize. Like, ran out of arrows. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say, somebody said earlier they didn't know where to see the film. Uh, you guys remind friends and family members, the Pan-African Film Festival right now is screening the film through, what, the 15th? Uh, the 14th? Time, the 14th mm -hmm. Which means you go online, you pay $8, and you can watch the film, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's it's worth it to <laughs> to be able to continue this conversation with others because this is a film like you can't explain anybody to do anybody what this film is about. You cannot <laughs> chit chat about what this film. I is wanted about. to say yeah. one last thing before I retire that, that that I really am very 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 uh, grateful, Tanya, for for you including me in oh. your project, and I'm oh. also and I'm also very very happy to have worked with all of you. Oh, because absolutely. because what we've done is to show character, you know, support for an uh, for an idea that is what embodies this country really, yeah. the idea of people from different backgrounds to getting together and 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 getting a, a, a message out and working together in spite of the differences of upbringing or economic situation or race or or place of uh, origin and whatnot. So what we've done, I mean, and we did it out of respect and out of affection and out of uh, understanding of the need to put this idea forward. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very grateful to have met all of you. And thank you for allowing me to be a better person at the same time. Because by, by seeing you, you, you reinforce everything. By being here and doing this, you reinforce everything that is good about this country and about, oh. the, world, and about the world itself. Yeah, so it gives you faith. Yes. You know, faith. So Beautifully I, wanted, put. I wanted to thank you all. Thank Thanks, Ruben. Yes. Love you, Ruben. Love you, Ruben. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love I'm going to chase the cat now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's very quiet. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> we, we had one more question from the, from the audience. They want to know what you think um, people should do with the feelings that they have that come up watching the film. You can always write me, uh, Tanya Pinkins at gmail.com. I love having the conversation. I made a movie that is supposed to get under your skin. Um, we are still a very segregated society and there aren't spaces for people to have these conversations that have to be had. And so I am open to having the conversation with you. Send me an email, we'll have the conversation. Um, I think that that's the only way we can change the world is when we have spaces to take these uncomfortable uh, feelings and 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 talk talk to somebody. Well, the film is out now. It's traveling to festivals. Already won two awards. I mean, people are seeing it. Sure. Having very we visceral. Won. We won. Oh, oh, my bad. I, Mykonos I best first feature <laughs> film in Mykonos. Best Black Lives Matter film in Mykonos. We won a best feature film in Amsterdam. We won a best um, first feature in Sweden. Woo so, yes. okay. Okay, wait, wow. We're already getting, you're already getting prizes. Like that's, that's amazing, Tanya. Congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. <laughs> we didn't hear from recognition. people up here. That's Vop Osley. I don't know if he's really there. He was, um, uh, made that cameo in the opening where his, um, his, um, he got killed very quickly. Vop, are you there? Are you going to say hi to everybody? Your camera's off. Hey, hi everybody. Uh, Tanya, it was a great, great honor just to uh, to be in the in the in the midst of so Can't many amazing you. people. So, oh, I don't think you want to see me. It's not it's not a it's not a great uh, hair day for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, just by the way, I had my COVID shot and uh, made me really, really sick. Uh, so oh, I'm probably not looking my best. But okay. but at least it's behind. But Tanya, it was just amazing, and just even my little cameo. Um, I'm I'm just thrilled to have been part of it. So thank you. Just thank amazing. You, Bob. Feel better. Feel yeah. better. And Bob, it was a pleasure holding the the noose around over your neck. Your you know, neck. I think a lot of people feel that way when they're around me. <laughs> <laughs> Bob is the president of the City Council of Indianapolis. He has a super majority. Uh, so this is one of our elected officials. We love working with Bob. <laughs> thank you. It was an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. Feel better. And Thank Stephen you. Kendall, you all didn't get to meet. He's one of our producers also. And Katie Rosen, I don't, Katie, we got Katie to meet right her earlier, but everyone wasn't here. So I just wanted to let each of them say something before we wrap it up. Well, well I've known Tanya for, I don't know, probably about 20 years, maybe not quite 20 years. And there's nothing Tanya can't do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and I agree with whoever said when Tanya, sets out to do something she brings everything to it uh, i thought the film was really really remarkable i almost never watch horror movies because i get very creeped out very very easily and i was very creeped out um and then there were these surprising things i think 
when that arrow went through Ruben's eye. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how that took place. Um, but to think that you could get this film up also when, you know, the, um, you know, the guy got swept out of the house and on fire and, um, you know, hung. I don't know how you made those effects. But the film works on all these levels. Uh, obviously, uh, it was put together, you know, from artists respecting each other and Tanya on a very, very low budget. Uh, going to Korea, I don't even know how that was possible. And now <laughs> the film is here forever and people will see it. And um, it'll evoke a lot of comment. And so congratulations, everybody. It was an amazing collective effort. And, uh, you know, I think you achieved a lot. I think you achieved really, really a tremendous amount and really beyond um, what you think you can do in, a, in 10 days uh, with a shoestring budget, you know, so. Amen. That's a producer talking, right? Yeah, no, it's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, and then, you know, this question of how do you get these, this film seen, you know, it's going to be, it's going to, it's, that's going to take some thought, you know, it's the, you know, the festivals are good, you got to find a distributor, um, but, you know, look, there's a, it's a big world, it's a big audience, uh, and, uh, and Tanya, you wrote, I mean, people say, you know, you directed and acted, but you wrote the film and you put everything together. And I'm sure lots and lots of people are going to see it and have uh, the thrill of seeing it and have the, um, you know, have to reckon with it as well. So good luck. Thank Amen. You. Thank Steve. you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Katie, you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess from my uh, vantage point, I came onto the project sort of a, very much around this time last year, maybe a little, maybe in February. And um, I didn't have the pleasure of meeting you all and being on set with you, which, you know, is is really the one of the fun parts. Although Tanya says the film is made three times. And I really do think that she's right about that because I got to sit in, you know, the sound mix a couple of weeks ago. And that was a really pivotal moment in the making of this project. But for me, and you guys have all sort of said this so eloquently and beautifully tonight was that, you know, Tanya ha has a very important voice and something that needs to be shared with the world and that the message of this film needs to be shared with the world. And um, Tanya's visionary um, in in so many moments in the film, like I I keep thinking about even the toilet paper line because I cannot believe she wrote that line in 2019, and way before toilet paper became such a huge thing. And then you know the other line for me that really resonates is like the president refuses to leave the White House, and like again something she wrote <laughs> exactly. two years ago before we moved through this moment all together. And so I think Tanya's really right again um about the fact that like this is the moment for the film like we did think that it belonged coming out before the election but i actually think that um people will see this film and understand it and uh and uh, be able to absorb the messaging better now knowing that these there really are you know the beckys and the karens and the um <laughs> QAnons of the world like this is yes. not a figment of a horror film. This is reality. And Tanya's just turning the lens on it. And so um, that's why I'm here. I feel like it's important to get this messaging out. And, um, and I really am grateful for all of you and all your um, hard work on it. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, and I, and I have to say, you know, God bless uh, the actual people. My sister is uh, one of those people who goes to people's houses and tries to get them to vote, who actually, actually, actually do that, that got, and that we got this vote and that we don't have to be under that presidency because I don't think we would be able to watch this film with that person still in the I, White House. I don't, I don't think anybody would be able to sit back for an hour and a half and consider this, this reality uh, if we didn't think that they were better parents for the nation right, right. now, so. But this film still, you know, I said it at the top of the, the webinar, I'm not pleased with what Biden's done in the first hundred days, you know? So this film reminds you that it's an ongoing thing you have to question. 
you have to figure out how to get people to be accountable especially because I feel like I worked really hard. I was in line in Brooklyn for six hours trying to vote, um, you know, and that was early voting, <laughs> you know? So it's like, even though I feel like I've done a lot, there, there's still nothing compared to the ongoing conversations we have to keep having and holding people accountable. Yes, good point. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah, I everyone mean, we keeps keep calling the stimulus uh, a generous thing. They keep saying it's a generous thing we're doing. And I think it's not generous, it's owed. And it's yeah. way past due. Yeah, and there needs to be more yeah. um, to, to help people because it's been a long time in which this economy has been starving people and making people work for no money and destroying families um, in all races you know, all genders, it's just been horrible. Um, you know, capitalism has gone amok. And, and so, yeah, there is a reckoning happening and it has to continue. And it's, it's this first hundred days, you know, it's a disappointment, um, but I'm hopeful. I'm still hopeful, oh, yeah. I'm not ready to give up, so. No, you can't, this movie shows you, you can't give up. <laughs> you can't do it. Yeah. Uh, Tanya, I love the credits. The credits were amazing. And they yeah. kind of told the story of your journey between all far before the start of this movie and the end of the movie. And the photo montages were just inside um, your mind. And I saw it. I thought it was really brilliant. Credits are one of my favorite things about it. I, I didn't realize there were two pages of us. And we have Cecile Blumenvar here, who is one of our our narrators at the end, she's in, in Ber and she's in Germany somewhere, and Annette Garber, who was also one of our narrators in the multiple languages of news stories that happened at the end. I didn't realize there were two pages. The credit, the credits are really, I, I loved the credits. Like they were as much a part of the movie for me as, as the, the movie, um, you know, the body of the movie. Uh, they, they could be Easter eggs that just, I, I have to watch it all the way to the end to see what a filmmaker's mind wants the, the viewer to just actually experience at the end of credits and, and you, you delivered. Thank you. Well, I thank you all for coming here and watching and for, for sharing all of your talents with me. You are <laughs> priceless. And you know, when I get that hundred million dollar movie, I'm calling you back and paying you what you're used to getting paid. But I, <laughs> We're gonna hold you to that. We're gonna hold you just to that. Tell us where. Please. Uh, oh, I, when, I adore you all and thank you Kiara for um for taking the lead for me tonight so I could just be with everybody congratulations everybody Tanya you thank you for job. being so amazing seriously thank you. love thank you. you thank you love thank you. you for doing this bye -bye, thank everybody. you bye bye you guys love are all great right. Tanya we bye. got together we got together okay bye 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 bye, bye. bye. good luck right, yeah. wait for the next one <laughs> Yes, I can't, yes I can't wait for it, everybody. Time. Let's do it again. Let's start tomorrow. <laughs> Take care, y'all. Stay safe. Robin, good night. Bye, Take everybody. Care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Take care. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you all. Oh, Kathy, Kathy, Bye. I have your um, arnica still that I borrowed. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, well, put it, use it well. Use it well. Use it well. Use it well. I have some because of you, honey. I came running out of the house and like, where's Kathy? I got her article. Oh, she left. She done. We forgot to talk about Maya, who had that scream at the beginning of the movie, and then did like a hundred other jobs That's on the movie. Right. And Miles with his first, they were their first yeah. time on the movie. I had That's them working right. from sun up to sundown. <laughs> Miles and everybody dressed and Maya, thank you so much. Yes, Maya. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Great experience. All righty. Take care, everybody. This is your seventh, okay. bye, this is everybody. Your seventh seal, Tanya. This is your seventh seal. They will be uh, teaching this in classes yes. for Ooh. years and years and years and years to come. You are going to make it into the great film classes. You are going to make it into the film canon. Thank you. Thank you so. You're getting baby girl. May oh, I, I need Kathy. I need you to start teaching classes how you sit still on a couch or something and then give like this amazing yeah. performance. That was that was <laughs> ridiculous. Because I I just I played it back four times. It's like hold on, wait a minute, this her. What is she doing with her? How? 
because at some point, I know with me, my nose would start to itch or something would happen. <laughs> I would not be able to do that. And I just kept looking. I was like, frozen? If you really? No, she's, she's moving. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Oh, my gosh. Was- <laughs> good night, all. I have to okay. go. Bye, Greg. Good right. to see you, too. Bye, oh, Thanks love so you all. I mean, all the really photos are great. <laughs> love you, guys. I, Thank I don't want to go. I don't want to leave. Yeah, none of us do. Bye, Maya. Bye, Miles. Who Thank that? you, Good to see you, man. Thank you, Katie Millicent. Thank you, Good night. I love you all. Right. Thank Good you, night. Vinci. Take Adessa, care. Great to see you. And congrats on your short film. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. All righty. Bye, bye, Maya. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye, Later. Tanya. Bye. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> Thank you, too. Thank you again, day. Tanya. Yes, awesome. Thank you. T, you are awesome. So proud of you, girl. Thank you. Here we are. We're down to the wire. There's six of us and five panelists left on here. Thank you guys so much. Melly and Katie and Kiara and Kathy. So Kathy, you know, one of your producers on Homeland, she watched the film the other day and she was like, I would never have thought of Kathy in that way, but I'm so glad you did. I just loved it at the end, how at the end of the movie, how you didn't think you were watching the same movie that you were watching before. And you didn't think that you were watching the same characters. Like it was, that was the way the footage, I mean, that was awesome, dude. I just love that. I just love the way it was a movie within a movie. That was, oh, because then you didn't think you were still with the same people you thought you were watching footage but you weren't watching footage you're watching the characters play it out it was so tricky it was so awesome you know minji kong you got that minji kong telling me about nonlinear storytelling i was like okay minji i have to flow with you (laughs) you got you guys got to team up again because i i i think the way you team up is kind of beyond extraordinary, you know? So definitely together. You have to go to, you have to go to Korea and quarantine and eat toilet shit food, whatever that was. (laughs) She did all sorts of crazy things. She got, what what did you get? You also got a vampire facial. Oh, I got the vampire (laughs) facial where they take the blood out of your arm and then inject it back into your face. I got the strings where they put some strings that's supposed to lift shit up. That shit didn't do nothing to me. I, they, this face is still sagging. Wow. <laughs> I tried all things Korea. Wow. 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 All right, ladies. I have, a, I'm, it's so funny. John Hudak is the gaffer on a shoot that I'm doing, which. Oh, John actually, Hudak. Oh, he's mm-hmm. great. He's it wonderful. launches tomorrow. So um, I have. Well, you better get some sleep. Kiara, yeah, thank you so I much. Have 76 emails to send out before dawn. You know how it is. Well, thank that too. So much, Kiara. <laughs> thank you All so right, much. You did an amazing job. I'm sorry you had trouble connecting. Thank you, darling. No, I, I had like six different links and none of them worked. I'm like, I can't. I, I wanted to just stay in and stay in the conversation. I was just going to sit back and watch because they, they were doing it. It would have been fine without me. But um, You did great. No, here. it was wonderful to have you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, darling. To have you so that I could like rest rather than feel yes. like I could work this too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Congratulations. Thanks. All right, sweetheart. Good night. Good night. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop off too. All right, thanks, Katie. Those kiddos are gonna get me up early. But um, congratulations, Tanya, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Nice to meet you both. You too. Bye. Stay safe. Bye, you guys. I, I love you. I love you guys so much. I had such a beautiful so great time. Movie, Catherine, you just, you just, you know, I could just put a camera on you and just let it roll. Well, you guys are amazing. But I, 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 I mean, truly, I think it was an amazing film. And I, I think I just, I will take that final scene with me forever at wherever I go. I'm going to take that final 30, that, fi- you know, the whole film was beautiful. The third act was extraordinary. And um, 
truly some of the best filmmaking I think I've seen in a really long time. Yep. Beside your message, which is amazing and important and necessary and so sad and so terrible and so terrifying, the way you are telling them, giving that message is, um, it's really, uh, it's, it's of the great of the greats, you know? So um, I can't wait to see what you do next. Me I cannot too. wait. Me too, me too. Thank you so much for giving me your time. Thank you, Melly, for coming up there and jumping in, honey, and saving the day. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, you guys are extraordinary. I got you, anytime. Extraordinary. All right. All right. We're going to say right. hi to everybody. Bye. Thanks to everybody who tuned in and listened and hung with us. I really appreciate you. And email me if you want to talk about anything. Night to everybody. Good night, ladies. Love you guys. Mwah. Love you so. I love you so. Mwah. Bye. 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 Bye.